Finasteride and Dutasteride are two of the most effective treatments for male pattern hair loss. But what's the difference between these two drugs? Which one is better and which one is right for you? Let's get right into it. Male pattern hair loss is caused by the hormone DHT. We know this because men that don't have DHT never lose their hair, men that take anabolic steroids that mimic DHT lose their hair faster, and men that are losing their hair already get their hair back once we remove DHT. These observations led us to start using drugs that selectively block DHT as a treatment for male pattern hair loss. The most common of which is a drug called finasteride that works by inhibiting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase that converts testosterone to DHT and is responsible for the majority of DHT in your body. However, there are three different kinds of 5-AR, type 1, type 2, and type 3. And finasteride only blocks type 2 and type 3 5-AR, which leaves type 1 5-AR available to continue producing DHT from testosterone. For most people, leaving type 1 5-AR alone is fine. They take finasteride, it's good enough, their hair loss stops, and they live happily ever after. But for others, finasteride is not enough. Either their hair loss continues to progress, or they don't get the regrowth that they were looking for. This is where dutasteride comes in. Unlike finasteride, dutasteride was developed to inhibit all three kinds of 5-AR, resulting in lower levels of scalp as well as blood DHT compared to finasteride. And originally, dutasteride was invented as a means to one-up finasteride for treating patients with prostate enlargement, but recently, dutasteride has been studied uh, in more depth, and, and it's been found that dutasteride is probably more efficacious than finasteride for treating male pattern hair loss. A systematic review and meta-analysis of three randomized controlled trials done by Zhu and colleagues, this by the way is one of the strongest types of scientific evidence, found that dutasteride was statistically better than finasteride in all measures of efficacy that were studied. These included improvements in hair counts, photographic evaluations by investigators as well as panels of experts, and subject self-assessments. The authors also found that there were no differences in terms of sexual side effects between finasteride and dutasteride. So for people who are unable to achieve their desired outcome with finasteride, dutasteride does seem like a logical next step. However, there are some potential drawbacks to taking dutasteride. For one, dutasteride is not approved by Health Canada or the FDA for treating hair loss. And although, as one of my commenters mentioned previously, dutasteride is approved for treating hair loss in Japan as well as South Korea, FDA approval is the gold standard for pharmaceuticals, and it just doesn't seem like there's the same level of clinical evidence for using dutasteride as a hair loss treatment compared with finasteride. Now, to achieve FDA approval, drug candidates need to go through phase one, two, and three clinical trials, followed by post-marketing surveillance in order to make sure that the drug is both safe and effective. The phase three clinical trial is typically the, the, the one that people like to look at. And when it comes to finasteride, their phase three clinical trial had 2,000 participants versus dutasteride's phase three clinical trial. That phase three clinical trial only had 153 participants. And even the meta-analysis that I mentioned was only able to include 576 participants between the three randomized control trials that were included. So sure, dutasteride it, it has gone through this difficult process of FDA approval when it comes to treating older men with prostate enlargement, but it just has not gone through this process when it comes to treating younger men for hair loss. Secondly, if we assume that side effects caused by these types of drugs increase as a function of off-target 5-alpha reductase inhibition as proposed by theories that highlight the importance of uh, certain neurosteroids, for example, which are synthesized by 5-AR, then we would expect to see more side effects in those that take dutasteride, the more complete 5-AR inhibitor, compared to finasteride, which only inhibits type 2 and type 3 5-AR. Thirdly, dutasteride lasts a very long time in your body with a half-life of 35 days versus finasteride, which only has a half-life of eight hours. This means that if you had side effects from one of these drugs and you wanted to stop the drug and clear it out of your system, it would take 232 days to get rid of 99% of dutasteride versus just over two days to get rid of 99% of finasteride. Fourthly, dutasteride is only available in a gelatin capsule, which makes it difficult to modify the dose. 
I know that some providers like to slowly increase the dose of finasteride to allow the body to adjust to the medication and to mitigate side effects. Now, whether or not this practice is evidence-based is up for debate, but with finasteride, this is very possible as it is a tablet that can be split, whereas with dutasteride, it only comes as a capsule, which cannot be split. With all that being said, dutasteride is a very safe molecule that as an FDA approved pharmaceutical for treating prostate enlargement, does have excellent quality control in any kind of, you know, the brand name Avodart or any type of generic that you're gonna find in Canadian or American pharmacies, it's gonna have great quality control. Um, it has undergone that rigorous safety testing that all pharmaceuticals need to undergo. And dutasteride is a much better option than unproven research chemicals with questionable quality control, with little or no human safety or efficacy data. And uh, as I've mentioned before, it looks like dutasteride is more effective than finasteride when it comes to treating hair loss. However, finasteride does take the edge in terms of safety, in my opinion. All that being said, personally, based on the, 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 the meta-analysis, I, I am thinking of switching to dutasteride as it does seem like the better option, and it doesn't seem like it would cause that many more side effects. Anyways, that's all I have to talk to you about today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much, and I'll see you in the next video.